1989, I wrote my first Easter poem. Um, at the time, I was, um, well, I was thinking about the situation in the North. Uh, it seems like a long time ago in terms of consciousness now, because in um, 2018, the situation is so entirely different. In 1989, Sinn Féin were not allowed to talk on the television, um, and not even about gardening. As a Sinn Féin uh, member couldn't even talk about gardening on the television. You had uh, Jerry Adams speaking on the television, uh, dubbed over. Uh, we couldn't hear the tone of his voice. And in a sense, it seemed almost no, it seemed normal then. That was the way things were. But when you think about the implications of that sort of thing, um, they're quite enormous. There was a lot of violence in Belfast at the time. And uh, so I had given up, I gave up my job in early 1990 and I decided to write poetry and I seemed to be moving towards writing something about the situation. It seemed to be that writing something about your national situation was what poets did. So myself and my partner and son moved to Belfast purely on the dry um, and lived off the Falls Road for a year. So I wrote an Easter poem every year for about seven years. Easter 1989 is published in my first book. Um, so when I came around to 2016 and the centenary, I thought I'd try writing an Easter poem as well. And this is what resulted. The imagistic uh, context of this is the flag, colors of the flag. Um, so the poem is written in tercets and it moves backwards and forwards um, from that period, 1989-90, to the present. Easter 2016. In a house off the Falls Road in 1989, a Buddhist monk struck a gong and chanted grace. A teenage boy sniggered, and a nervous tabby nosed the saffron folds. The day before, the memorable sound was gunfire, and if there were prayers amid the random cracks, they took the veil of air and played dead about the serried windows. Buses billowed into storms of grey complexity from the bombed blazes of their guts. Outside a greengrocer's, an old woman braved the shots to rearrange carrots and cabbage. 2016, Bereva Estate. I rise to the small sun sent from the obstructed horizon that casts a gold aura on the tall, chimneyless buildings. Three-bedroomed duplexes ride apartments. It's a much sought-after area. No fires need solid fuel. Meet my neighbours, Christophe and Rebecca. We trust each other with mail. A scent of bergamot meets you when you call to deliver. Behind you, the pristine grass is bare. Yes, I own the orange Persian. She's not a stray, she just sits on the wrong mat. Sound insulation is close to perfect. Inside, you might as well be in Connemara, or back in Baru's time, in a monk's hut, refitted with constant light, vaguely sensing the standing stone. On the man-made mound, in the centre of the closed cluster, Beauvale do heritage. Dalriada, Tarkil, Militian Court, Quildov, lest we forego. The management is efficient. Litter is spiked daily by a brown-skinned man who smiles as he works. The red brick keeps its colour. Cosy if crowded, a maze of contempt. I was greener than grass in a Lisburn chipper when I linked a Protestant dyke and asked for fish in my Republican tones. Two good reasons to die. She knew. She was always scrambling through the windows of married women, breached the barrier on the Donegal Road to court this Fenian with a carved black cat. 
I knew a Catholic artist drew King Billy for UVF prisoners in Crumlin Road. It wasn't religion then, or when the IRA whipped his son for sniffing glue. I did nothing but live a while on the front line, my baby oblivious to the casual slant of a soldier's gun and shootings outside the rock bar. We scurried back south. Everywhere is north of somewhere. On a quiet beach, I wondered how to bear peace. I heard of sex between militants in an occupied house. Death is sexy, she told. But later, when the red has faded from the cloth, there you are with a white sheet, like too much light. You seek the face, and it's white you find, the features ironed out, the white of silence, of carved stones, of women on Xanax, of optimistic tree-interrupted streets, crystalline shopping meccas, scrubbed hotels in the cultural quarter. Flags are too flat for what they support. The miniature gardens of Bereva take me back to Rockmore Road. Lay a patio if you can't maintain the grass. Later, upgrade. The sage Persian hides for hours among the stunted shrubs, thinking them a jungle. You can learn to live anywhere, she purrs, having mounted the last wall of the estate and returned. The boy with the bag of glue spent too long on the corner. When his parents split, he wasn't quite there when he put a noose over his head for whiteness. These times, I recall my granduncle, distant as the moon, member of the Cork Brigade. There is nothing so coherent we can say it's done, even if we never knew it, though new shops cut into the field can redraw the mental map in days. There's a greenish lane reminds me of country behind Airside Industrial Estate, past the fancy nursing home, keep on to the dead end. Like a country road, there are daisies and snowdrops. The last house protests its privacy. And no, Bereva is not pronounced Baru, but his corpse was waked in the now Protestant church the night after the battle, white as a martial suit.